Hello, I'm Luke and I'm going to show you how to make or wrap a mallet here. Now before you begin, you're going to need some kind of yarn. You're going to need some type of curved needle. Uh, if you only have a straight needle, that's fine. This one allows you to go in and uh, angle it out a little bit. You'll need that later. You need your mallet on a stick. You'll have some kind of core. I have extra rubber cores here. Honestly, anything can be a mallet core. It just depends on what you want to wrap around it, the sound you're looking for. Uh, wooden balls. This is rubber tape alongside a plastic head. And good old cork. So the easiest thing. I'm right-handed. I'll try to show you the point of view of this. Um, the way you start is you take the end of your yarn, and I just hold it right up here against the stick underneath the head and so then you will just wrap across the top you will come underneath you'll give it a little turn and do the same you can see that I've got kind of a quarter turn there do it again and you can see I'm starting to make a pattern across the top do it again can see. So every time I go right over the top, I give it just maybe a quarter turn, go over the top, a little bit of a turn, over the top, and now I'm trying to fill in the white parts. Okay, You're going to start to see a little mound along the top, which is fine, and you're just going to continue going over and filling in any empty space. Don't worry if there are little bits of white that you can see through. The more you wrap it up, you know, you'll cover all those spots. And don't worry about being like too uneven on one side or the other, because as soon as you start playing with that mallet, um, the yarn kind of settles in. So as long as it's wrapped, it should be good to go. Okay, I'm going to continue uh, with my wrapping here. Again, it is go over, turn over, turn over, turn over. And so that's really it. I'm just going over the top. I'm filling in those empty spaces. You can probably see that I'm not turning exactly a quarter or a sixth or whatever. Every time I turn, I'm just trying to fill in those spots. Okay, now as you can see, I've got kind of a regular mallet head going. So now, instead of going directly, oops, going directly over the top, now that I've got a little bit of a foundation, now when I wrap, I'm going to go to off center just a little bit off center same idea go over come around and now I'm gonna start wrapping off center the reason oops I'm wrapping off center now is this is gonna give you a good pattern and area to uh, sew it up when you're done okay I'm going to just do this for a little bit Talk to you soon. Now you should be able to see how I've got a little bit of a opening right there instead of the point. That's where we're going to put the needles through here later. So I'm just going to wrap some more. Okay, good enough for the moment. Now you're going to make two or four of these. Now what I like to do is 
if this is how big I want my mallet to be, then I need to be able to sew up the top and the bottom. The way that I do that is I need some slack yarn. So if this is what I like, now I'm gonna just spin the mallet, and now I'm wrapping up this extra slack. This is the stuff that I'm gonna sew into the mallet head. And I just push it up just to kind of keep it consistent, and I can sort of see, you know, how much I need. The, uh, the total amount that I use is hard to say, but that's probably about three feet, you know, like an arm length, something like that. And now that I have my extra thread, you can just pop it off. And here you go. So I would wrap three more of these. I would leave them the same, and then I would come into sewing. Since I'm only doing one mallet, time for this curved needle. You need to have a very large needle because you have to fit the yarn through it, and uh, yarn's pretty thick. A lot of needles are not. Okay, so now I have that through. And I'm going to kind of unravel this now so I have a little bit of slack. Okay, so this is where I wrapped it up. Now you can do a couple of things. I could sew it down here first, or I could sew it up there first. It does not matter. So I'm going to just go to the top for grins and giggles. So that's my piece of slack. I'm going to go in the middle of that, and the needle should come out not too far from the top. If it comes out like way down there, or you know, too high up, you're not going to get a lot of uh, quality with the sewing. So let's see. I'm going to go into the middle, come out right about there, and pull all the way through. Now when you pull it through, you still have this loose thread. Watch. Okay, see how it pulls tight? If I pull it really, really hard, this is going to just... Well, let's go ahead and do it. It should... start to kind of ruin the mallet. It might actually pull... There we go. Up like that and unravel a stitch. We don't want to do that. Okay, so we got one. Now I'm just going to pretty much go around the center in a kind of a clock pattern. How many times do you want to, how many stitches around? Up to you. I would say at least eight. Um, I've never, I don't think I usually count. I probably end up with, you know, eight to 12. Okay, so there's mine. I'm going to go to the side of it. And I'm going to spin the mallet. I'm going to keep doing that. Through the top. Through the top. Now you can see that I've made it once around, and you can see these little crown stitches around the top there. If I want to put on more, fantastic. You go right ahead and you can make a little thick ring there. You only need enough stitches to just make it hold, so 8, 9, 10, that's, that's enough. Now onto the bottom. So we're going to get this into the bottom. 
So you see it's just sticking out. We're going to flip her over and you're going to kind of lay the yarn along when you do that. So watch. This one's a little trickier than the top. You have to go underneath. This is why you need a curved needle usually. It's going to go through some of it. Pull it through and check the so now that when that's pulled tight, you can't really see where that thread was. And now the pattern's a little off, like there's it's a little bunched up there. But I'll tell you, once you check this out, I'm just gonna kind of roll it in my hand. When you start doing that, when you start playing with them, the yarn is gonna settle. I don't know how <laughs> a better way to say that. The yarn is going to sort of lay next to each other, so any any patterns that look like super off, uh, you start smacking them onto some wood and <laughs> they work better. So don't worry about that. If it looks really goofy, you'll improve. Okay, so same basic idea. That's where my thread comes out. So that means that I'm going to put my needle in right about here. And do the same thing around the entire bottom. Like I said, somewhere around 8, 10, 12. Whatever amount of stitches actually um, holds it, more than enough. So I'm going to keep going in here. Just around the circle. If you decide you want to end up going around it more than once, again, that's your business. You have a great time. And, okay. So now you can see I have... Actually, hold up. So, yarn's all tangly. Yarn is, is spun and wound. So, when you start wrapping it around mallets and you start pulling it through, it can get it can wind itself up because there's already some tension on it. So you see how it's twisted? When I start to turn, you see how it kind of pulls on itself? Okay. Now I'm going to do that really fast, and I bet you what's going to happen is I'm going to get this tangled because I'm just going to go kind of fast. Eh. Didn't do it. But at any rate, you can see that it starts to pull across itself, and it will tangle itself up into a knot you won't get out, like, because it's just too small. So when you start to see this getting wound up like that, just kind of, you can pull it out, untangle it a little bit. All right, so now from here, You've got your top, you've got the bottom, so now what do you do with the leftover? This is the easiest thing ever. You won't believe that this works, but it has. Alright, so now instead of making loops, I'm going to just go all the way through. So watch. I try to, um, I kind of go back, you know, where the string comes out. Now I'm going to shoot it all the way through. You can kind of see across the bottom what I'm doing. All the way through it. Same area. All the way back. And same area. Maybe I'll go off to the other side, but you know, I'm pushing it through. So what I did is I put the thread across it three times and so it's all wound up in this and it, it essentially pulled itself tight and then all the little stringy bits on the yarn you can see all the fuzz that actually tangles up with itself so even though I didn't tie a knot I have never literally never had a piece of yarn just sort of pop out and unravel never 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 so there you go that's a mallet Easy peasy. Oh yeah, and then just uh, cut that off or tear it because you're a savage. 
Now this isn't very big. I did it quick in a hurry. Uh, you can wrap as big size as you want. Uh, when you're doing sets of two or four, you might start by counting the amount of wraps you do. However, I, I don't. Um, the way that I basically do it is when I start wrapping, I really just compare it by size. And here's a cool thing too. If you have a set of four and they're all the same hardness, you could, the, the top mallet that you'd play, you can make that harder by putting less yarn on. And your bottom mallet, your base mallet, you can actually wrap it more and make it a softer mallet. That's called voicing your mallets, where you got a softer one on the base, your two middle ones are the same, and then your high one is going to be harder. Uh, so if you play across a large range of the instrument, it can be really handy to have, you know, a different hardness mallet in the bass and then uh, in the soprano. Hope it helps.